Welcome to Serial Podcast 9. I'm Gerard from Serial 9. And I'm Kevin from Serial 9. And I'm Ryan from Dota Logic. And this is Serial Podcast 9. Episode 267. That's the one. I oh, got Carter. new Jody got new chairs, so these ones won't break. And they Ryan waited. I hope so. We bought them uh, from some well-to-do man on the North Shore. Oh, was well-to-do man? He's rich. Yeah, he means. seemed well off. I wouldn't say he was rich, rich, but he seemed like well off. And when after the transaction was complete, he said, "Be well." And I was like, "That's a weird thing to say to someone." And then I left. I think be well is a good thing, you know. It is nice. It, it hit differently. Maybe it was like stay well or something. I don't know. Gerard, what are we talking about tonight? Today, today. we're gonna today or tonight or whatever you want to call it. We're gonna talk this about morning. money. Today we're gonna talk about money. Mm, good. Cash. Cash, Cash money. money. Cash Dinero. Money. Zip zero. Stingy with De Niro. Yen. Pounds. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, it. We're just going to talk about different denominations of money. <laughs> how about some Bitcoin? I bet you'd like that. Yeah. What's no. the current exchange rate? I'm not on yen Bitcoins. to Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about how much things cost. Costs. How much things cost. How to support your car hobby, if you will. Um, you know why some stuff is. How to make money with a car hobby. Yeah. yeah that's what I want to know. I got a pen and paper out. I've been failing at this for 12 years and I was like, Jared's going to like instill some wisdom. And then all of a sudden it's like, here's how you buy car parts. It's like, yeah, I'm good. I get credit. (laughs) Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like a lot of people have a lot of cars and a lot of, you know, toys and it's like, well, shit, like how much money does this guy have and how much does he have invested in, in, you know, these cars and these, these work wheels or these, you know, coilovers or this, you know, single turbo. It's like, what does that stuff actually cost? I know there's a, probably a lot of listeners that already know how much this stuff costs, but there may be some people that are just kind of getting into it, or maybe people that want to go into a different aspect of the car world and maybe don't know, you know, how much. Oh, shit, are we going to like practically try and say what our car costs? <laughs> Cause I don't want to do that. That sucks. That's why. Cause that's you'll have to be game. faced. You'll have to be faced with the reality that you sunk like a solid amount of thousands and tens of thousands of dollars into your car. Yeah, you're exactly gonna, that. You're yeah, going to exactly. realize you're the Carrie Bradshaw of cars. You know, who Carrie Bradshaw. Is? No, uh, it's, it's, I want to say that's like a football coach. No, I think that's Terry Bradshaw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie is, uh, is the main character from Sex in the City, uh, HBO's Sex in the City. <laughs> and she spends all of her money on shoes. Yeah, what's her face? Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah That's Jessica right. Parker, who's married to Ferris Bueller. Really? Matthew oh, really? Broderick. Uh, all right, so you want us to talk about how much our cars are worth? Well, also, yeah. And then, like, how much we put into it. And, and I mean, I think it's probably going to touch a bit on the subject of like value for the car. I mean, I don't want to go back into it. We've already sort of touched on that subject, but it's like, let's say you have a budget and like, like maybe there's some things that you should do first. There's important things that you should probably do. And there's things like, you don't, you don't buy a single turbo for a car that needs, you know, suspension maintenance and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe, maybe we can kind of help some people like, I don't think you're going to change those people's mind <laughs> fully on board, but like, yeah, yeah I, would no, thought you're I, gonna... I definitely get both points of view. It's yeah. like, you know, having been there and done that, like right now, the crown is a perfect example. It's like, man, I really want to swap the transmission, but I need to do every single maintenance item on that motor. <laughs> You know, luckily it's a Jay Z. It'll just keep running. It'll just puke a lot of oil, burn a lot of oil, but it'll still keep running. So I'll just drive the world's most terrible Echo and do both the transmission <laughs> and all the maintenance at the same time. Good. I think um, that's the lesson for today: is just drive an awful Echo, and you can have everything. Yeah. Just so I'm clear, I can throw my pen and paper away. You're not going to tell me how to make money off of cars in a hobby. I mean, there's definitely ways because you don't necessarily make money because all you're trying to do is support the fucking hobby. So you don't need to make money. You just need required parts, right? All right. So okay. a lot of times it's, you know, there's a hustle involved, right? You got to hustle this part for that part. I, I'm usually pretty good at doing that type of thing. I know Eric is also pretty good at doing doing that type of thing. Uh, some people like to just have a shit ton of money and just, you know, buy this part and that part, you know? And maybe there's some areas where you can skimp on like name brand stuff versus not name brand stuff. Like, 
Good example, does it matter that you have a Tomei exhaust or a Gretti exhaust? Or could you build an exhaust out of, you know, like mandrel bent, mild steel or galvanized tubing? You know, that's that's one of those things. It's like, it's, it's obviously sick to have the TIG welded titanium pie cut fucking super duper $8,000 exhaust. But like, does it actually make more power? No. Does it change the sound 50% better? Not really. But like, it's about the flex. Gerard. One yeah. thing I will say, if you want to continue and be in the card game a long time, having a trade or a skill yeah. is extremely helpful. Yeah, that's like a if perfect one. If, if, you're, if you're great at wiring, all of a yeah. sudden you're going to have people lining up to do your aluminum TIG welding on your intercooler piping because yeah. they need you to do their wiring. There but you go. That's the same the thing. If, if you can do the welding, then you're in. You know, if you're like, oh man, like I can, I can roll your fenders. I can make your kit fit. I can Mm -hmm. tune your motor. Like I can get you a turbo. Like if you can do any one of the specific niches of the car market, then you're going to have friends who can do the other ones and everyone can help each other out and you're going to go further for less. Yeah, man. And I mean, or maybe you're just super sick of doing all the shit yourself. And like you save yourself a lot of money on labor, like, you know, fabricating, wiring, painting you know body work like you you know like wheel building i don't know like if if you're somehow amazing at all that stuff you could save yourself a lot of money but like otherwise just like kevin said like maybe you're good at one of them and you could trade some labor for labor you know what i mean there's always labor involved no matter how no matter how amazing you are building a car like because you know time is money and if you want to spend 10 years building your car then sure you can do everything on it but like Maybe you just want to drive it next season and you don't want to sit there or you don't have the time to sit there for eight hours and wire the whole engine or, you know, paint the car or like make the exhaust or, you know, any of that stuff. So sometimes time is money. You just got to spend the money to get it done quicker. Or, or maybe pick and choose, you know, same thing. Yeah. It's just like maybe you're really bad or it's something or that particular thing. Maybe you're not that bad, but it's going to take you forever. Mm-hmm. And, you you know, that's where you're going to spend your money, you know. I want to know this. How many people do you think out there can do everything and are really good at it? They're like, oh, I'm a jack of all trades and I can do everything phenomenally. And how many people just think they can do everything phenomenally? (laughs) I want to say it's a fairly small number of people that can actually build cars quite well. And like, I feel like that comes with a lot of experience. Like there's not going to be, there's going to be a very, very small handful of young guys that can do that, but there's going to be a lot more sort of older guys that can do that for sure. Um, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. There's guys that can like fabricate like no tomorrow and they're like 22 years old or 25 years old. But, you know, maybe it's like that thing they say where like to do something really well, you have to do it for like 10,000 hours or something. I think it's 40,000 hours. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah, no, it's a lot. (laughs) No, that's and that's just it. Honestly, it's like how many people can do all of those things extremely well. Yeah. Like nobody. Yeah, exactly. Like no, yeah. nobody's nobody's like a ten out of ten at wiring, yeah. at body work, at suspension setup, at chassis fab, at welding, and overseeing building. the build of that car. Like maybe exactly. even the style like, of that car is sick, or maybe it's not sick. You know what I mean? Yeah, having a vision, doing yeah. the body work. Body work's different from the paint. Yeah, you, you know, like there's so many facets to to a completed car or a completed project. Yeah, like to to even be able to to do all of them yourself to any degree Mm -hmm. is a point of pride yeah yeah exactly i mean i'm a little bit less like that now like i used to really try to do a lot of stuff myself but in my age and you know i got like a family and 20 million other things to do i just want to drive a fucking car i'd rather just somehow pay someone or trade some parts or trade some labor to get the car done i mean i obviously like doing some of the work a lot of the stuff that I find tedious or just sort of like difficult for myself to do, I'd rather just get someone to do it. Two things. I, I always found, especially starting out in the car world, a lot of people like their eyes are bigger than their stomach and they oh, yeah. look at a project and they're like, well, I can do this. I can rebuild an engine. I can yeah. you know, do an engine swap. And I've seen a lot of projects never get finished because oh, absolutely. someone took on a thing that they couldn't handle. Oh, yeah. That was me at, at 15 years old, man. Like, 
I got the sickest car. I got the biggest build. I got the craziest engine. I got the, my, my, I, my car has more fabrication than anybody's car. And it's like, cool. Except that we spend every weekend rolling in my buddy's car. Like every memory we made throughout our teenagehood was made not in my car. Um, what things, Gerard, do you not work on now by yours? Like what things do you send away to get people to work on? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not very Fire. good. At yeah. I'm not very good at fabricating. Like I, I, I mean, I can do it. I just, it takes me forever and I don't, I can weld and stuff, but like, it, it's not as nice as like, but yeah, stuff like that and wiring, I don't really enjoy doing. I mean, I did just wire a couple of AT emulators. That's really basic, but like, I'm not, I'm not wiring an engine. You know what I mean? Like I could do it. It wouldn't turn out nearly as good as like some of the people locally that can do it. Or, or, you know, if you're going to buy a, a nicely professionally made harness, which, which is, is kind of a double-edged sword. Cause that's one of the things I wanted to talk about too. It's like as a youngster or as a, beginner how do you know what to spend your money on because everything seems good you know what i mean this product seems dope that that harness seems like it works this ecu is supposed to be good but it's like you know you buy it and it's a piece of shit you buy this harness and it's missing a bunch of stuff you buy this this product and it like falls apart like like that's a very like real thing that happens in our industry and like honestly, I don't really know how to like alleviate that research. Yeah, do honestly, a lot like, of research. You know, like I feel that a lot of the people in the car world are very familiar with doing a lot of research because it feels like every purchase you're making is a very large purchase, and you want to make the right one. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a lot of like normal people, if you will, like aren't making big purchases all the time. You know, like yeah. what are they buying? Like a laptop. Yeah, it's like a car guy spending laptop money every month on yep. some different thing, and that's yeah. you know, like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's it is it is also very interesting when you think about like you're spending the price of the car that you bought three times, four times, five times over, five, six, seven, eight times over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. easily. The every, car is all... just the the canvas. <laughs> Yeah, so totally. before we get into that, where does one go to research now? Because like Man, I, I feel like now, now is the only time you can really research. Like, well, I mean, there's, there's, there's yes and no, right? Like, because we see it every day. So now there's like Facebook groups because before there were forums, and I mean, the problem is there's so many fucking internet know-it-alls. They, they think they know everything, and they talk like they know everything, but they actually have no experience. So it's like really difficult for like some guy who doesn't know a lot of stuff. He asks the right questions. He's trying to do the research. And then there's five guys that are like, oh, this is the best. Oh, this is the best. Buy BCs, buy this. And it's like, it's like these dudes have never had other coilovers. They don't even know what coilovers are supposed to feel like. They don't know what's good or bad. So like, they're like, I bought BCs. They're on my car and they drive down the road. So they're the sickest because they were 800 bucks. And it's like, I mean, that might be what that guy's criteria is, but if the guy wants a good riding, proper handling coilover, maybe BCs aren't the answer, but there's like eight people in this group that have BCs and think it's rad. So now he's going to buy BCs because like these people were like, yo, they're sick. You know what I mean? And I mean, like there's a plethora of decent coilovers, but like you'll get 10 guys tell you to buy BCs. That's because everybody wants to be the guy. That's the nature of yeah. the car scene, right? Everybody wants to be the fastest. Everyone wants to have the sickest car. Everyone yeah. wants. And then it's like, if you don't have that, if your car doesn't like hold up, or even if it's like mildly okay, you yeah. can compensate for that with just like knowledge. Yeah. And then usually a lot of these guys too are like, I can do this for you, right? Like it's like them being that guy. It's like, how many of those BC, the guys that tell oh. you to get BCs are also the ones that are selling the BCs? Yeah, exactly. It's like I can get you a deal on them. I mean, the also plug. there's, there's, there's sometimes there's the guy who's like, everyone says is the best because he can do like a, a fucking 20% job you know like a paint job like that's the thing so people ask us all the time oh like where do you guys go for paint and body and it's like honestly dude i don't have a fucking clue because body shops are are impossible to like they're either working for one year or two years and then they're like fucked because this painter is not the same painter this this body shop doesn't exist anymore 
like they charge like way too much this and that like whatever and it's like I don't I mean, have 99% much. of the shops are just insurance shops where they're like oh yeah. this car was in an accident yeah. and the book time is 12 hours and I can like do the repairs and paint yeah. it in six hours yeah. so like I'm just going to get paid for 12 hours of six hours of work why and would then, I not do that versus, and then you, versus exactly. you're going to come to me and try and undercut me yeah. on my labor time and you want me to do like a low rider like quality yep. paint job yeah. with like glitter and all sorts of stupid shit exactly like, you know, when i painted my mazda the guy yeah. like completely tried to talk me out of it he's like i don't know why you're doing this <laughs> but it was that he was like an and insurance that, shop and that's the thing so like let's talk about that first of all what does it cost to paint a fucking car man like realistically what does it cost four thousand dollars yeah four to five thousand dollars exactly and it's like are, are we really paying four to five thousand dollars to paint a car like that's a huge chunk of money and is a four to five thousand dollar paint job a good paint job it's probably a meeky, mediocre paint job. Oh, that, going... like, that was like where you're getting like the paint job. You're getting a car a different color. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A normal person walking into a yeah. body shop. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why, honestly, like we, we don't, we don't, we sort of don't have that skill set yet. But like to be able to paint a car is actually like one of the really most valuable sort of like skill sets to have when being into cars. Because it's one of the most expensive things to do to a car and it changes the aspect. It's, it's the most visually uh, like differentiating things of your car. It's like I probably spent five, over $5,000 in paint and body work on the Alteza. Yeah. And I mean, so if you generally, if you have, a and we up, did a bunch of it ourselves. Oh yeah, for sure. Body work. You got to do yourself. You got to do as much as you possibly can. Cause like if you're taking your car to some shop or some guy or some place to like get it painted or whatever, they're not going to spend as much time as you are on the places that you're, you need to spend your time on like the fenders, the inside of the fenders, uh, you know, the bumper tabs and stuff like that. Cause all of our cars are super low. They're super fitted. All that stuff has to clear and it has to be done before paint. Do your fender work before paint, do all your cutting and grinding and sanding and fitting and adding the different holes for the fucking zip ties or whatever you may use. Do that all before paint. And just get the guy to like paint the fucking car. Yeah, literally figure out everything before paint. I've been a ton of times where people are like, yo, man, I just got my car painted. Can you roll the fenders? <laughs> and Gerard's like, man, you should have called me two weeks ago. Like, what are yeah. you like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. I mean, generally you can still do it, but it's like absolutely the worst idea. The worst idea. Yeah, the paint's still like wet then. <laughs> yeah, well, not only that, it's like, oh, the car actually wasn't an accident before. There's Bondo in the fender. You didn't fix that. And now you just painted over it. And now I'm going to like basically destroy your old paint job and your new paint job and your fender because there's a bunch of Bondo in it. So that's, a, that's sick. You know what I mean? But yeah, so... On the cheaper end of the scale, the cheapest we've ever paid for paint job is basically like $1,500. And that's like the absolute bare minimum hookup. I just paint the car. You do most of the prep yourself. You assemble it yourself. You disassemble it yourself. You roll it into my shop. You help me tape the fucking thing. I spray it. You take it out the next day and you're, it's your, you do whatever you need yeah, to do. You're putting it. the, you're taking the tape off. Yeah. You're putting the door handles back in. Yeah. Like that was the paint job I had. Like I was holding, holding the mirrors in the paint booth for the guy for <laughs> yeah. my thousand dollar paint job. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I mean, if you got an amazing painter, it, it could be a thousand bucks. You could have an amazing paint job. And I mean, that's yeah, kind of the thing totally. with drift cars too. It's like the drift car has to look good from, you know, 10 feet. And I mean, sometimes if, if you give a shit to like wet sand it or do any of that stuff, like, it, yeah, you, you can get a thousand dollar paint job to look amazing. But I mean, most of the time, is it is it a really cool color? Because you should choose a really cool color. Because if it's not a nice paint job, the really cool color will take it a really like it'll take it a long way. Is it shiny? Make sure it's fucking a cool color. It's shiny, and put some stickers on it. You're you're good to go. So you're, you're saying spend less on paint, but do all the do all the prep work. Honestly, this just seems like Serial Nine tells you how to do everything you want to do on a budget. Yeah, because yeah, like I that mean, was the paint part, and now we're yeah, gonna move on to part. the next part. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean that's that's exactly it. That's it be... what it is. I'm not yeah. learning about how to make money or how much everyone's cars cost. Well, I mean, so... okay, let's like how much do you think your Alteza is worth, Kevin? How much do you think you've put into the Alteza? Like re retail price to everything on the Alteza? Yeah, I, let's I let's mean, let's do that. Like if, know, if somebody 50, wanted to build your Alteza, thousand dollars is probably I would say. Yeah, fifty five zero. 
Yeah, I would think so. You That's could have a Tesla Model 3 for that price. <laughs> no, I you mean, couldn't. Could. Somebody asked me before, uh, what would I sell the Aristo for? And I said 50K. You remember that, Ryan? Yeah. I was like, yeah, 50K. And they're like, oh, like, blah, blah. Like you're, I'm like, all right, let's try to build it. Yeah, the Aristo, for example, like, I don't, like, you could probably spend 50K to build a car like that. But you would never have a car like that because we did so much R&D on that car. And a lot of those parts on that car were one-offs or like the suspension was custom valve. Like, you know, there's so much custom stuff on that car that like, I don't even know. I guess you'd have to literally mimic my car to build it. And I think I think you'd probably be spending well over 50K. Yeah, like, maybe I mean, the Altezza doesn't have $50,000 worth of parts, but like to do the work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you do count all the your work, hours yeah. of labor and stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, like even the amount of, like I, I have fucking three or four different transmissions in that car or well, like two different transmissions, but I mean, you know, it had a V160 I mean, in it at I one mean, point. I mean, three, including the one it came with. Yeah, exactly, right? So yeah, it had a V160 in it for a while. I mean, you, you made that, I made that drive shaft. That was, you know, X amount of dollars. Took the V160 out, developed the CD Pro, put the CD Pro in, you know, make another fucking drive shaft. Make, you know, like all these yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, like that was also had different transmission cross members and shifters. Yeah, yeah. two, three different clutches in that car. Like, you know, two, to, two, three different engine mounts. Yeah. Two, three different coilover sets. Like, you know, like four or five different wheel sets. Like, yeah, yeah. it's endless. M- multiple diffs. Yeah, multiple diffs. Yeah, multiple exhaust setups. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's endless, right? So I would say like, if you were trying to build like a half decent, respectable car, it's at least $20,000. At least $20,000. On top of the car? Yeah, on top of the car with, the, uh, probably I mean, not I, with the cost of the car anymore. No, well, yeah, no, I, I would so, say. Now I would, that's the cost of your car these days. Well, that's, yeah. a, you could get a $500 Cressida or a $2,000 S chassis. But yeah, I mean, in today's day and age, could you even build a car for 20 grand? I don't even think so, man. Like, not a car that you would, not Gerard a car could. that we would, yeah, well. I, Gerard could. You could easily find, you could f- pick something out right now that's like, seven to twelve thousand yeah and then put whatever thirteen to eight thousand into it and you you know yeah that's come also up with something cool but yeah yeah there's a few caveats on that right <laughs> like there's there's a there's obviously like, he's gonna like, buy a g35 well yeah well, well then it's <laughs> already got that. not cool <laughs> yeah. you could buy a standard one you could buy a standard one for 5k yeah i, I, I think yeah i, I mean, think that's... you just buy the g37 outright and <laughs> just be done <laughs> yeah oh look i got a g37 and, um, and, I, mean, and I mean that's the thing right like yeah you know like a lot of people are like oh you don't call it coilovers and wheels a build and they said that i mean honestly a build is kind of like what you make of it obviously the more involved the build is the more of a build it is but i mean like uh, you know like if you could have the same car as the crazy built car do the same thing and they offer the same enjoyment there's nothing wrong with that at all like you could buy a brand new I don't know, 400 Z put coilovers and some cool wheels on it and, and do exactly the same thing as your $50,000 S chassis probably could maybe even better. And it's cool in a different way. Like the S chassis is obviously cool in the fact that it's, you know, it's rare. It's got all these cool parts and it's been built and it's like, you know, but I mean, what's, what's cooler than the brand new car that you bought. And it's like super sick. Like nobody even has that car yet. That's but definitely I mean, not like a, a world I flirted with yet, but I, as I get older, I can see the appeal more and mm. more. Cause I remember we used to like make fun of dudes. It was like, well, you know, like you're going to buy like a brand new M3, like for whatever X amount of dollars where you could just buy this car and spend like, yeah. that much upgrading it. And then it's more unique and more you and like, sounds cooler and like yeah, looks better yeah. but then like that was the thing about comparing it against the m3 it was like well it's it it doesn't sound cooler and it doesn't have better fitment and it doesn't yeah. perform better and it doesn't break better and it's like well and it doesn't have as good seats and it doesn't have like <laughs> you'd have like, to put a ton of money into it to even yeah like you yeah know, like how much money are you putting into an a86 exactly outperform an e46 m3 like yeah and i mean that and all then, of the money how much i want an answer <laughs> yeah like a hundred and twenty thousand dollars yeah and that's the thing and the m3 is only like 60 grand you know what i mean it's like like it's it's actually pretty good value so so that was i i got that that sort of lesson when i was building civics so type R comes out type R is like whatever, $32,000 or something like that. My, my Wait, what year was it? Like Sorry, 98, no 98 or 2000. 
basically you could buy the type R for X amount of dollars, or you could build the EK to compete with the type R. So like it's an EK hatch and you would basically take everything out of a type R anyways, and put it into the EK. And at the end of the day, is the EK hatch or the civic hatchback better than the type R? Probably not. It's just different than the type R where you could just buy the type R and it's already fucking dope to start with. And all you just do is put more parts on the type R. I feel like we're all guilty of this, but it feels like that is part of like the, the gatekeeping attitude where it's like, if you just bought the type R, any, you know, your mom could just go buy a type R. Yeah. But like, if you built that EK with all type R running gear, yeah, that's something special. Like it like, is. Yeah. And, and you know, like if someone sees that they're just like, Oh, it's just like a EK hatch. But if someone sees that and they're like, yo, that's like a five lug EK hatch. Yeah. Like, ITR breaks. And then like, they're like, yeah. yo, like, did that hit, you know like that thing hit VTAC and it, like then they know and then I think that like maybe that's a little bit of like what like the entire car culture and I mean yeah that's about, true that is know? the world we live in so we think that stuff is cool whereas we maybe don't think that a stock type R is cool but in today's day and age it's like well actually if you roll up with a stock like like 98 spec ITR like JDM or USTM like that's pretty sick you know what I mean like but I mean, I'd still take the the crazy EK over that. But in today's day and age, what's worth more? I want to talk about gatekeeping, but we can't because we're talking about money next week. Gatekeeping. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So you guys, what did we talk about? Paint and what was the next one? Well, so you're saying like I don't. So so just as a takeaway well, for paint, you, you do as much work as you can and take it to a painter. And you're paying anywhere from one thousand to five thousand dollars for paint is what you're saying when you build the car is how much you pay. Basically, man. Yeah. Okay. And, then, and you're still you're still shooting in the dark whether or not it's gonna be a good paint job. Like real, unless you got a guy. So real like, solid sell on paint. Maybe just Gerard, buy a car with Gerard good paint. can take it there. Gerard can make the fender perfect, bondo the fender, sand it out, smooth it out, make it great. I I can't I can't get it there you know I don't know if I just don't have enough time doing it I do feel like I have a lot of time doing it I just don't yeah I just I just don't know I don't think I have the patience for doing it so I have in the past I paid Gerard and I paid many other people to do my body work for me Mm -hmm. because I know I can't do it to the level that I want it to be done to like welding my exhaust, like I don't really care if there's bubble gum welds. I don't really care if there's a couple of pinholes. That's yeah. fine. But if if my fender line doesn't look right because it, I didn't sand it right, that's not going to fly for me. Yeah, and that's it's where a I'm very, willing very to spend my money. Thing. Yeah. Would you say you've put forty thousand hours into a body work? <laughs> and maybe if you haven't, no. that's why it hasn't worked out for you yet. Totally, totally, exactly. Awesome. But you know, but... like at, you know, same thing. It's like at this point in my life is putting another 35,000 hours into body work (laughs) worth it for me. (laughs) No, I should probably just put that into my business. Yeah. 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 Which makes money, which we're not going to talk about this episode. (laughs) (laughs) We're just going to talk about how to spend money to build a car. So save okay. money while building your car. Oh yeah, but so okay. <laughs> look, you can go through this all day, and like we'd say, suspension. And I imagine, given the people that I'm talking to, when we talk about suspension, we're probably going to say spend a little bit more money on suspension. Is that fair? Uh, I mean, if you guys please say that your business, you build suspension parts. <laughs> like, I mean, don't, yeah. oh, you can cheap out. That's dumb. You spend money on suspension. A ball like, out, you need every out, like, single part. Yeah, you didn't start a podcast to tell people to not buy parts from you. That's just dumb. Yo, well, honestly, I mean, honestly, like I told Marvin, and I also told Daryl. Like, I'm like, Daryl was like, "Yo, I'm gonna buy all the arms." I'm just like, "Well, dude, like, you you don't even really have like, why are you buying the arms? Like, you don't have excessive camber, like, blah blah. You know, like, why are you? You know, what do you need the arms for? And then Marvin also the same thing was like, "Yo, I'm gonna put all these arms on before the event," and I'm like, "Well, like." like you know same thing like why are you trying to change your alignment and he's like well then no and i'm like well then you're just gonna mess up your alignment (laughs) yeah no well i mean that's the thing it's like there there's certain things that do things like you know like you could take a car that wasn't excessively lowered 
and go drifting with it and it's totally fine like maybe add some knuckles or something whatever you know those ak those ak 49s the serial nine cells that would be a great idea but there you go now you got <laughs> now you got the hang of it but i mean if you don't need to adjust the camber you don't need an adjustable arm if your toe doesn't it doesn't go within spec you don't need a toe arm i mean obviously there are advantages in getting rid of some bushings and adding some precision and stuff like that for sure and a lot of the new stuff that serial nine is doing or that we're doing is is we're trying to actually improve the unsprung weight and save weight like you know the new billet uppers and stuff are lighter than stock which is advantageous if you care that much about improving your sort of suspension's performance but at the end of the day, like you could take a good driver and shred a completely stock JZX 100 or a completely stock 350Z or a completely stock M3. And like buddy guy two could have every arm and every engine mod and every diff and every wheel and, and it still suck. Right. Yeah. 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 But here's the thing going back to the ego bit, okay. every car guy thinks they're a great driver. Like at yeah. some point they're like, I shred. And it's like, that's why like, I'm every, and I've said this before. Every guy thinks they're the exception to the rule. It's like, hey, what's the what's the key to being a good driver? It's like seat time. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm already a good driver. So <laughs> knuckles, V8, swap, like yeah. they just do the list and then they build Blitz the car threes. and never drive it. <laughs> that doesn't compensate for like seat time. So I think there is value in what you're saying. You're like, if you care about like, you know, like precision and unspun weight. The, probably the better the driver you get eventually you're going to come to a point where you're like yeah i absolutely do care about that but it's probably like that's not for me right like mm -hmm. i think we can all agree it's like mm -hmm. i needed some serial nine parts to fit my wheels yeah but i'm not like out there it's like i often look at your parts and i'm like i don't look they're all rad but a lot of the times i'm like i don't know what i would do with these and if they're if it's even advantageous for me to have some of these right so it's like yeah so and, uh, that's a fun question as a person like myself who's not a drifter and just kind of has a car that wants to have it be fun to drive what are the things that you, where would you spend the money on that um absolutely get coilovers like get a good set of coilovers whatever you think that may be i mean obviously we have our preferences and stuff but like get a what's good your set preference of stances or uh yeah stances i would probably get something from japan uh like um dg5s or i mean i've driven on some of those blitzes some of the hks's are pretty good uh what's that other one blades <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember your blades to be terrible either whatever I mean, for me, it's like if I get in it and within the first two minutes, I'm like, why is this so bouncy? Or like, why does why is the car moving constantly? I'm just like, these suck. I don't want to drive that car. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. I, I can't drive it fast. Like a, a good coilover is something that like it's, you know, it, it offers a comfortable ride no matter how like stiff it may be, but also it just allows you to, to drive the car. Cause some coilovers, like you're always looking for the bumps. You're like swerving all over the fucking place, trying to miss potholes or like, you know, road undulations or, you know, and th th that's not how you drive that's, a car. That's not suspension. Yeah. That like the minute you're doing that, like that means you, your suspension is not working. Hmm. Yeah. You've decreased the performance and enjoyment of your car. <laughs> you've basically lowered it. That's all you've done. Like yeah. sick. So Spend good money on suspension, whatever you like, do your yeah. research, figure yeah. out what you think that is. I mean, there may be other brands that also offer the same type of things, but I haven't driven on every brand of coilover, right? So, mm -hmm. and I mean, companies are constantly evolving, you know, like a fortune, fortune auto from, you know, five years ago may not be a fortune auto from today. I, I don't know, but like, that's, I, I have my preferences. We get most of our suspension custom valved, so. Yeah, That's what you got to do is wait till the new manufacturers make something and then all the lesser manufacturers rip them off. So you just got to <laughs> wait for like the, like the delay and then you can yeah. do better thing. I'd also say to spend a little bit more on a quality ball joint and tie rod. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might just be a Toyota thing where if the front lower ball joint fails, like it can, the wheel basically comes out yeah but, oh okay uh, like a replacement part yeah yeah i mean step one is obviously just go through the car and make sure nothing's fucked up <laughs> like 
tension rod bushings. That's a huge one on the Toyotas. Just always replace them. Uh, LCA steering rack ball joints. Like Kevin said, the lower ball joints and outer tie rods. Those are just a huge like problem area for those cars. Yeah. Like if you're going to, if you're going to spend $1,200 on coilovers, maybe just, you know, spend three, $400 first on lower ball joints. So that mm -hmm. when you put those coilovers on, it's not a month later and your wheel is like destroyed your fender yeah. and now you're getting a two, $300 tow. Yeah. And then you do you new fenders, your wheels taco, you know? You're... Yeah. You also, now you need to borrow that ball joint for $150 that you could have bought before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, it's basically like the number one game changer is a coilover. Um, obviously depending on what kind of wheels come with the car, I mean, if it's going to be some balloon ass, like 50 or 60 series tires, I'm probably going to change the wheels, um, you know, because obviously wheels or the tires, you're going to change the wheels. I don't well, know. I mean, you're going to change the wheels and tires because that's a visual thing. You lower it, you put wheels and tires on it. And then I mean, what are you going to buy different tires for the stock wheels? Yeah, you know, really, profile. Yeah, probably not. not. Yeah. No, but hey, here's a fun question. How much money oh. should you spend on wheels, you guys? I mean, that's a subjective thing. If it's well, we, just, yeah, the... I mean, we, I feel like we talked about that so much. Yeah, it's I like... just wanted Gerard to say, "Is it a wheel? <laughs> Nothing. Does it go roundy round." <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I was is really. It seat, is it a seat? Does it go up and down? <laughs> yeah, I wanted the. Uh, I wanted that. I wanted the. Does well, I would say okay. So I mean, so one thing I'm gonna say is like, as a younger dude, I used to always be like, oh, like it has to be this and it has to be that, and, you know, it has to be the most and it has to be the the stiffest and it has to be the craziest wheel and it has to be you know what at the end of the day like it doesn't fucking matter whatever you like whatever makes you happy with that car like it's kind of sick like i've accepted the fact that i like to build cars like i like to put cool parts on cars i like certain things you know for me like you said like the first thing i do is like suspension wheels steering wheel and seat because i always touching that that's what i do when i get in the car and everyone's like oh don't take the airbag out and stuff it's like if i could have a six steering wheel with an airbag i probably would but like for the life of me i've never in my life fucking seen one so i like yeah. what kind of steering wheel would you recommend buying <laughs> one that you like i don't know i prefer smaller ones but lately i've tried a 350 and i thought it wasn't bad so my new steering wheel is going to be a 350 that serial nine uh you know no mercy steering wheel well how much are you going to spend on engine parts how much did you I like, would, this is the thing this is very hard because it depends on the engine like, well that's the thing is maybe you should have bought a car that doesn't you know like if you have a certain budget you have to kind of budget for the whole shit but also yeah. maybe maybe you originally don't really think your car is going to be that crazy like maybe you <laughs> maybe you buy a beams alteza and like you're like oh like sick like i got a clutch and a flywheel and some coilovers and diff mounts and I'm done. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, like the motor's got low compression and now I need a, like a different motor and I'm going to get a Jay-Z and now I need a transmission and now I need a turbo and now I need an intercooler and now I need a fuel pressure regulator and now I need an ECU and like, you know what I mean? Like it, it can be a never ending. Yeah. Like do you, every time you like buy I, you know, I'm not, that, you that's not even the end of it. I'm not even done. Like, yeah. <laughs> do you want to keep going? Uh, you can. We uh, could list, we could that's list. I'm not even done. There's still, Shit, we could just do. list the whole thing. Like I, well, that would be lots whole, of fun. I think it'd be hilarious. You just I'd like literally <laughs> list every part that was on my, on my, on my Aristo. It'd be well, fucking the magazine article that you're reading out loud for people <laughs> on a podcast. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, I, here's the thing I want to know. So, when you guys get a car, do you build out a budget for it? <laughs> do you like sit down and be like, I'm gonna, or do you just like, because I don't? I I'm mean, like, I'm basically is like, is it, is it a budget build or is it a no holds barred build? Because I think, like, for example, the drift cars in, in the Serial 9 family, like the Stasia, for example, like, I don't really foresee like, I mean, it's not like we have an unlimited budget, but like that's kind of going to be like a flagship car. So like, I feel like we could spend more money on it. And the Blit is kind of like a street budget car. A lot of the stuff I bought myself, Serial 9 definitely has paid or is paying for some of those parts, but like, it's still like a company car, but it's not like, you know, we'd probably buy $4,000 worth of seats for the Stagia but we're definitely not buying $4,000 worth of seats for the fucking blend. Right. You know, and we're probably spending $4,000 on wheels for the Stagia or, you know, the Alteza or whatever Kevin's building for his next drift car. 
but we're definitely not spending four thousand dollars of wheels on wheels for the street car so you just decide when you're building a car if it's a budget build and then in your mind you know that there's like i can cut some corners on it or like be lax lackadaisical <laughs> lackadaisical and then uh on your like drift car you're like throwing like wads of cash no it. but it has to do the job so like i mean it, but i mean me- also like that maybe is a function of us seeing like a modicum of success as well it's you know like gerard built the aristo over six years with yeah. like parts from old cars yeah and like you know what i mean like our own parts that were in development and like as much as i make fun of gerard you know for being extra or whatever and like wanting like the best of the best it's like that car didn't have a lot of money into it didn't really have a ton of things done to it yeah like that was actually like a budget build technically like you, you know there's there's definitely guys you see that like to spend money left, right, and center. Like they buy the seat rails, they buy the brand new seats, they buy all the defi gauges, they buy, you know, the the crazy wheels. They got the three point four stroker, like all that stuff. Like that's like, that's even next level to our cars. Like our cars are like, I want to say like a, I don't know, like a fucking stage, stage three, and there's five stages, and then you got the guy who's doing all that stuff. He's got the FRS with the two JZ and the three point four. That's like a stage five. You know There's dudes mean? at Final Boat who have nothing to do with the car industry who have crazier ISs than I showed up with. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but they didn't have the heart that you had, Kevin. <laughs> um, but, it, but yeah. So no, that's... I'm just saying, like, that. I mean, that used to be me before. It's like, I just you worked a job that paid super well, and yeah. then I would just go and pay people to do my shit on my car because yeah. I just wanted to have my car work, and I wanted to be at every single drift event, and I'm like here, but weld now, my cage here. Do you know? Yeah. Do my clutch here. Yeah. Like whatever. But as, as we've learned, cages are whack unless you need them. <laughs> so jokes on them. Cages are whack. Um, but, yeah. Indeed. Okay, but so here's the thing. So part of this episode is meant to be like, how do you fund all this? So we have a sense that like, car surprise, cars are expensive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like what's a more expensive hobby, man? Besides, I guess like traveling, maybe like. Traveling's not a fucking Drugs. hobby. Get out of here. Drugs are traveling really is fully a hobby. Traveling Traveling's a hobby. not a hobby. What is How it? Is traveling a not a hobby. Who doesn't like to travel? A lot of people. Dude, Dude I, I never years ago. Yeah, I never traveled for the like the biggest part That's of my life. You didn't travel, so if you never travel and then you don't travel, you I don't know that you like so... travel, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I just I never had the money, and you're like, I like traveling. I also beer? just like spend all my money. You're a hobby. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I that's mean, different from drinking. Like, if you're I mean, an it's alcoholic, definitely not you don't a give personality, a shit. but I guess it could be a hobby. <laughs> it's my personality. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I don't. It's weird. I think traveling used to be a hobby. What the fuck I think, is it like, now? Imagine traveling like pre-smartphones and pre-like what? internet. What's and, the like, fucking difference? Because like people actually had to sit down and do research and understand where they were going and like book hotels. Like you, you couldn't still just have go to on. do that. Yeah, man. But you, don't, way you, you don't have to go. Yeah, it's way easier. Barriers of entry you, you for sound travel. Like a gatekeeper right now. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. No, Dude, because okay. I think that it's pretty two dimensional to be like perfect a hobby example. Perfect example. Travel. My okay. honeymoon. Seven, I think it was ten days we spent it in Bali. And like, if it was like you said back in the day, you couldn't have done as much shit as I did in the ten days. Exactly. We, we had the three different hotels booked. We had the the plane here and the that and the fucking the fast boat to this place. And it's like, I don't have time to go there and ask the guy and find out what time the boat's going. And I mean, f- I, I would have been fucking ten days in one place because exactly like people exactly. lower back then though. But there's yeah. people. There like, are yeah. people that at that time pre the internet and all that shit figured it out you mean but it's also t- you had to have like travel agents i feel like you guys are arguing two different things <laughs> yeah because you know I mean? like, yeah. you're, you're saying yeah this time before phones like it was totally different it's like yeah it was totally different because yeah you had to do everything that gerard just said like get there talk to the guy or find out where the spot was before, go yeah. you know like whereas now you can just do that all that beforehand yeah see all the sites on your phone before you even get there well, also, yeah. it's it's time management, right? Like, could you imagine getting off the plane in an unknown place and trying to find 
a place to stay that night after well, being on the plane the for 20 books. fucking two hours right like you would have actually had to do that through a travel agent you would have had to been like and you would have a guidebook and you'd be like following this Call guide itinerary book. yeah and you'd have an like it was that was a challenge now it's just like dude it's still a challenge man it's not that bad. whatever man <laughs> and everybody's just hobbies talking about fucking <laughs> travel you guys Get are out so funny here. to me right now. This is like the, the funniest I've ever been amused by both <laughs> you two together right now. <laughs> man. It's fucking bullshit, man. That's man, what it is. Like, it's hard to find like, a place to fucking Like, what role does Ryan woman? living in? Like, you are like like techno geek to the max. Like, and you're like upset How am right I now. techno geek to the max? I don't know. I feel you like work at a tech place. That doesn't, you guys, I don't <laughs> fucking do anything with computers. I went to film school. Yeah, how do you make fucking films how do you edit on a that computer? Shit? You edit that shit by cutting film? Well, I learned. Splicing I did, films together? I did learn that, yes. You learned how to splice films? That's yes. so cool, man. Uh, that is sick. Deck. Yeah, that's dude. so cool. Can you do dude, that you for used one to lose... You put cigarette no, burns in? Well, dudes used to like lose their fingers on those machines. What? On the Steinbecks, I think. Yeah. Tell me some more stories about that. No, let's talk about bullshit hobby travel. Um, but this this actually brings me to my point. It was like, Gerard, when you were, I can cut this out. When you were building your first cars, mm-hmm. how did you research building those cars? Because you were like, oh, I did a bunch of research. But in my mind, when you were building like your old like British Ford, mm-hmm. I know the internet must have existed. <laughs> I mean, barely, man. Like the yeah, internet so, was like ninety four, ninety five. Like I graduated in in like ninety four. So like, so like, what did you? How talk did to you, people? Yeah, it was all like word of mouth and connections. Yeah, like what would you even do to research how what the fuck a Cortina even is? I, I don't know. Like, you know, it's word of mouth, and you just build this elaborate network of all these fucking interconnected people for like, this is your engine guy. This is your suspension guy. This is your fabrication group of people. And this is your Cortina group of people. And it just goes from there. And you go to shops and like talk to them because they were there before and they could actually help you. I don't know, man. It's definitely a lot more fucking work. Like, like travel used to be. (laughs) That's but I mean, that's the time thing. management. You but I mean, that's the, that's the that thing. Is you could, today, you could be guy A and you could go on the Facebook fucking IS300 form and ask them what kind of oil to use. And you could just be like, oh, I'm going to use this oil because eight out of 10 people said use this fucking oil. And that's and the it's thing totally the wrong kind, oil. And we're kind of shitting on the people that like are using like. And I mean, yeah, that's actually not a bad point because back in the day, the only way I knew to get good information was to go to the people that were doing the shit. Yes. Like I got my engine from a guy that that built motors for Westwood. Like he, so like I knew the engine was good because he gave me a book from this wizard of Pinto two liters called David Bizard. He's like, yeah, I built the book to these spec. I built the engine to to this to these specs. Like this is how I did it. And you know, I have this other race engine, and I you know I used to race at Westwood and this and that. And I was like, okay, this guy has actual experience. So I'm going to trust them now because we're talking about money and like the only real tip that we've had is learn a trade, which doesn't help me. I don't know any trades. Photography, so, man, you have, you fully have a trade that is yeah. very valuable. Yeah. Definitely like, more so now I feel in the car scene than ever before. Yeah. Like, why do you think you're getting a, f- a free clutch job and a free clutch and a, all these serial nine parts? Like you've literally, it's, it's a perfect example. Yeah, I mean that's the first time that's ever happened. That's real nice, but <laughs> but yeah. I mean it's a trade. You have a trade. It's a yeah. valuable trade to us, and and we and have we some valuable do. stuff yeah. to you. But for anyone else, it's like, how do you pick find... up a camera? Talk to Ryan Benoit. <laughs> Everyone become a photographer. <laughs> who do you shoot for? Yeah, that is the question. You go to a track. You ask people who they shoot for, and then they look confused and they say myself, and you're like, hmm, times have changed. I mean, honestly, that's not even the worst thing, man. Like, honestly, for like a lot of dudes starting out, figure out something that you fucking like and get good at it. I don't know if that still exists in today's day and age, but like, do that. That's what I mean. Like, if you have any any one of those automotive skills, you can trade that skill to your friends who have the other ones. But I mean, hell, even not fucking make music, make make videos, make 
fucking pornos. I don't know. Do anything, but like be good at it so that you could trade it for some shit that you want or need. Trade your pornos for car builds. Uh, not a bad no. idea. Uh, it probably happens to you, man. You know, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. Like, maybe you're really good at. Man, I hope joints. someone. How many, how many car builds? Like, how many car builds have you traded for porn? Yeah, I hope someone <laughs> reaches out to Gerard. Yeah. Like, how many Yo. DVD? How many DVDs? Is a no, I'm just worth? saying. Like maybe the. <laughs> so maybe I'm the not asking for a sponsor, serial nine sponsorship. I will trade you some homemade pornography for parts. I'm just saying, maybe the guy's like really, really sick at making knives or some shit that's like completely unrelated to cars. Maybe he I makes camping was... equipment or something. Who the fuck knows? Right. But like, it, it, it could be a trade. It could be traded. I'm and honestly, that's kind of cool because like maybe the car scene is throws it back to the back in the day where like you had to trade A for B. Because I mean, yeah, you could trade B for money or trade A for money, but like, Nobody in the car game has money, man. Everyone has shit that yeah. they want to trade. You know what I mean? That, but not everybody has shit that they want to trade. That's the thing. I, I actually, like, you guys are some of the first people that I've met that have things that they want to trade. <laughs> like, not a ton of people. Maybe Alex from Rare Spec has things he wants to trade. It's a, it's a very, very tricky thing. And, like, when we originally, when you're like, we're going to talk about money, I was like, man, Gerard's going to explain to me how to make it go at something that you're passionate about. And I was like, this is what I want to hear. Kind of exactly what I said. Find something that you like and fucking yeah. be good at it. Yeah. That's kind of what you did. And I mean, that's that's what, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what, what Alex is do. doing. Everyone's finding their niche. That's tricky too, though. Like, I remember watching, to your point, like, I remember watching dudes start out in photography and just being like, hey, uh, I'll take photos of your car for X amount of dollars. And I remember <laughs> early on, there was nobody putting their hand up for photos now more there are people that put their hand up for like getting photos and want to exchange for money and i i think that's a nice shift but like when i was doing it 12 years ago that was not the case you weren't charging people to take photos you know i mean like, that's like that's like you're ahead of the curve almost though you know yeah yeah I, it's like the second <laughs> generation like the generation that per that followed after me figured it out the business model and mm-hmm. it, it worked the generation that saw all these professional car photos of regular cars that all wanted really wanted that and are now willing to pay the next generation yeah. for that now that's actually an interesting way to look at it so all the photographers that are making money give me just a little bit of money because of <laughs> paved the way so, uh yeah because you would there was a point where dudes would be like if you're taking a picture of my car you should pay me <laughs> Like those are things that people have said. It's like, excuse me. It's like, I would yeah, man. love to just be like, well, that's nice. See you later. Um, yeah, that's what I was. One thing I was gonna say too. That's like anybody can roll fenders today. I mean, you could buy a fucking two hundred dollar fender roller or a hundred dollar. You could rent it on Craigslist for forty bucks, and like you could do your own fenders for sure. But like, people still pay me a lot of money to roll fenders because that's what I've been doing for the past. 20 years or something like that 40,000 you know. hours is the answer. yeah exactly definitely exactly. 40,000 hours with a fender yeah. roll for drugs yeah. yeah cars are expensive it is a very expensive hobby I don't mm-hmm. and like I know there are dudes that sit down and, and like pencil out or like this is all the things that I need to do and how much money I'm probably going to spend on it but like I don't know those guys like the guys that I know are you two <laughs> It's like the same mentality where it's like, am I going to try to do this budget minded or not at all? And then you just like kind of go with the flow and you, I, I think I'm always cognizant of it, but like in my, in my, I guess the way I do things is like, there's always that, that baseline level. It's like, I want, I know what I want the car to be. And then I try to fit the things within that budget. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Like and I've to never, me, it always like, it feels that like, the more the time goes on though like obviously the budget extends and like Mm -hmm. the longer you have it like then you're like all right well oh like i might as well do this part now or like yeah now i might as well do this or yeah maybe not might as well or maybe it's like now i can finally do this yeah there's there's things that i struggle with like for example a two-way diff it's like i've never bought a new two-way diff i've I've just always had a welded or i had some fucking hand me down like 1.5 or two-way whatever but like it was kind of like I've always wanted a two-way diff because like, and like you getting the used ones different because like you didn't break it in. You didn't buy, you didn't take it out of the box. You weren't the person to like set up this diff's life. 
because I had one before and it was the most horrendous thing I've ever had in my car. And I literally just turned around and sold it for a bunch of money because I was like, fuck this thing. It makes my car sound broken. The welded is much better on, you know. Yeah, like, it was way worse than a welded. It's way worse than a welded. So that's the thing. It's like one of these things that like it's a big ticket item is a two way dip. And to some people, that's one of the most important things. And they would have bought that before some other things. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe some people spend $1,500 on wheels and $1,500 on a two-way diff, but clearly serial nine is spending $3,000 on wheels and 50 bucks on a welded diff. Right. But like, yeah, that's one of the things I'd always wanted to buy as a two-way. So now I'm like, fuck, I just want a two-way. And Are seats. you going to do that? Are you going to get a two-way? Honestly, like uh, a diff is like, especially at the drift event last weekend, I was just like, man, I got this like gauge cluster. I could have had a diff. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Basically like, for the yeah. same amount of money. Yeah. I could have had a diff and maybe I'd be getting some grip right now. Forward bite <laughs> with like with the weld. I'm like, I feel like I'm getting to the point with the welded where I'm like noticing the down the downsides, you know. But sick, you got some blinking fucking shift lights, bro. Yeah, exactly. And it says know? serial nine when you start up your car. I mean, that is it is pretty tight though. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's just it. Right. That's perfect. That's a perfect example of like budgetary, you know, sort of like, like what's your baseline, man? Is your baseline fucking ultimate grip and ultimate performance or is your baseline like ultimate flex? And I mean, it may be ultimate flex. There's nothing really wrong with that. If it's a sick flex. Gerard, do you feel that you're at the point now that you'll start to notice or is that like you can still live with like a well okay so i'll tell you i'll tell you the funny thing honestly i don't even really want the 1.5 for the drift car i want the 1.5 for the street car <laughs> but like just because you said two-way be the whole time yeah, you said well, whatever I whatever get a two-way not a 1.5 yeah, yeah. continuity error a proper <laughs> why do you want a 1.5 all of a sudden get the two-way Okay, whatever. Because the one point five way makes sense for the street, and the two way, which we were talking about, it was for the drift car the whole time. Yeah, but I'm 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 probably not going to buy two goddamn diffs. So it's like if I'm going (laughs) to buy one diff, the the reason why it makes sense in the street car is because I can have a welded in the drift car because it doesn't fucking matter. I don't really drive that car anyways, and when I drive it, I don't give a fuck that it's spinning the tires all the time. I don't give a fuck that it's like a bit noisy. I don't give you or not noisy, but like you know, on like I don't care. But on the street car, it's like, I just want it to drive. Like I, when I look at the OS, like literature, they're like, this makes your car feel like it drives like completely stock. But when you want it to do the thing, it does the thing. It doesn't interfere with everyday driving. And I'm just thinking, man, like that's what I want because. It like, kind yeah, of sounds I, like I wrote it. It does the thing. Right. <laughs> My <laughs> trade is I write for OS guy. <laughs> thing when you want it. Thing when but yeah, it's thing. like. It's like I have the Torsen and it's like I totally thought a Torsen would be fine for a street car, but like the couple times when I've wanted to do the thing, I'm like, oh, wait a second, what's happening? It's not doing it, or it's like doing it differently than I want it. And it's like all I want is the the shit to happen when I want it to do. That's my baseline, right? When I want it to drift, I want it to drift. When I want it to grip, I want it to grip. Like, you know, and and the welded in I'm used to the welded. I mean, maybe I'm not at the level of Kevin, but like I'm used to the welded. I don't really give a shit that much. Like I like to drive my car. I'm not trying to bang doors. I don't like really need to get as close as I fucking can. For me, it's like, I'm going to build the sickest car, go out there and slide it around, have a bit of fun. I did kind of want to get a bit more competitive with the Aristo because it was at that level where like I started to not care about it as much and driving closer to your friends is fun. But it's like with the new build of Stasia, it's like, I'm going to like do the fenders, do the engine work, do the thing. It's going to be a brand new car with these sick fenders and these sick wheels and this brand new paint job. I'm not trying to bang doors with that car for like at least six months or maybe a year. Like I just want the car to be nice. That's fair. You know what I mean? No, I get it. So that's why it doesn't really make sense to put a diff in that car. Cause I, I, I'm used to the welded, you know what I mean? So, so I think the thing that we should have said from the get go, when you say budget, what does that actually mean? Like what's a budget build for a serial (laughs) nine? (laughs) $20,000. on top of the price of the car yeah and then like a full I, out is what, I f- so. cause no because i feel like no matter you know what i mean like like, like no matter what car you're gonna buy like i mean i i guess that's not true because you know like I, if you were to buy a g37 right now like you you know you could just weld the diff put yeah. coil overs and wheels on it and probably go have a great time and like that's not twenty thousand dollars on top of the car by any sense but, yeah like you could probably get a you gk know, if you were to buy an kit. s13 you probably 
Yeah. yeah. I, I honestly, you could you can go have fun for way less than twenty thousand dollars on top of a car. Yeah, absolutely. It just but doesn't feel talking, like you guys do that. I guess we're also talking about like like a build, like you got like yeah, like, like it's a, a, it's a stylish wheel, like car and like, yeah, like if you're gonna okay, so let's just not sugarcoat it. Like if you're gonna hang with the clout crew or if you're gonna like hang with like whatever there is that baseline so like the baseline for an s13 is significantly higher than a g37 right yeah like you're gonna have to have a pretty fucking sick s chassis or i mean even a jzx 100 like the fact that it's a jzx 100 doesn't really get you that far you know what i mean like sick you have a jzx 100 and it's got some fucking wheels from japan terrible fitment and a bunch of blown out bushings and it smokes a bunch, like my 110, like sick, sick fucking build. Like you drive down the street and it looks like a pile of junk because it's just puking smoke out the exhaust. Yeah. Like you got an early model, you see a fan, it better be banging. Yeah. Compared exactly. to like a, a, just, a, just a coilover UCF 30. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah. Like, and then if you had like an LS 460, it's like, like if that, like literally if the LS 460 was on the ground and static, that's, that's pretty fucking sick because you're taking like a sixty thousand dollar car and basically destroying it yeah, and like scraping it on the ground that's like a that's like a crazy thing to do whereas like taking your ucf 10 that's worth fucking two thousand dollars and destroying it on the ground it's, it's not quite the same level of like dedication Throwing money in the toilet you know yeah it's all about how much money you can throw in the toilet <laughs> that is the moral of today's episode it's it kind of the not, moral of the car it, industry yeah, yeah it kind of not indirectly, but actually what you kind of just said is aligns with that. It is funny. It's like the more expensive the car, like the dollar sign attached to it, the more the we're less like modified it has to be. Well, it has yeah. to be like sick. Well, you could take, yeah, I mean, shit, you could take a UCF 30 and put Lamborghini wheels on it. And that'd probably be cool. You know what I mean? I also think like the more unique the build is and like the more, like if you have a car that's pretty obscure, but it has like a pretty decent level of build quality or build ingenuity yeah. or creativity that like goes a long way man like just for sure. I, remember, I remember seeing like a like one of those things a lancia delta and i mean it had bc coils and like some fucking i think they were like ssr at not xxr wheels or whatever and i, I feel thought, like, like a lancia delta in like stock form is yeah. already like a gawk worthy car exactly yeah. it's like it's pretty crazy and then it was like low and fitted and i mean granted it had like xxrs but like they were cool they're like 16 by eight zeros or something and i was like shit that's pretty cool man and it, i mean you know it had set into me for some reason <laughs> i don't know why and it had like bcs but like you could buy bcs for a lancia delta you can't buy stances for a lancia delta like that's Can whatever you, you... or they or they were just like very common and that person adapted them no, no, they were like I know that on on the thing you could buy BCs for that's, literally almost every car, man. Dude, that's so funny. like Honda Odyssey, Toyota Sienna, like dude, they have like listings for like all sorts. They probably have fucking Jimny coilovers for fuck's sake. I don't know. I don't know what that is. You know what they don't have? Echo. I bet you they do. Because it's probably no, when I got my Echo, I looked it up. <laughs> and they don't. <laughs> they have Camry though, I know that. Oh good. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's one way to make it because if you don't make it for the car, ain't nobody buying it for that car. So to go back to it, 20,000 money. Yeah, let's go back to money. This is very loosely tied to money. It's more <laughs> cost than money. So do the work as much work as you can yourself, trade work that you can't, prepare to spend $20,000 on a build, budget build, mm -hmm. unless it's a fancy car. Mm -hmm. then you can spend a little bit less. I feel that if you are 10 out of 10 welder, 10 out of 10 automotive electrician, 10 out of 10 automotive body man, any of those things, you've probably gotten to level three of everything else. A bunch of other things. Probably yeah. not guaranteed because like, that's the thing is like, if you are a body man by trade every day, you're probably not going to want to go home and do a bunch of wiring and all this other stuff. Like, you know, like if you work on cars every day, <laughs> you probably don't want to work on cars after work, you know? Yeah. Unless you're but, really into cars. <clears throat> but if you are, you know, if you do want to work on cars and you are any of those trades, when you do get off work, you are working on cars 
Yeah. You're doing those other trades. So they, the, all those skill levels come up too. So yeah. if, if you are one of those master people at any of those automotive skills, you probably do have a bunch of other automotive skills. Do you, I mean, sorry, I was just going to ask, I don't, I, and I, it's not that I know a lot, but I don't know any like body dudes that at the end of the day are like, I want to go do more body work. You know, like I did never really like, I swear like literally everybody, man. That's oh really? Do. Oh, do they do it? Like maybe just on the, the side. Time on the side okay that makes sense all right that's why i asked yeah i feel that everybody who does their job professionally is willing to do it on the side because they're it's like oh i'm getting paid th- or they're charging out 300 dollars an hour for my labor mm-hmm. i can easily go undercut them and do it for a hundred dollars an hour of my labor at the yeah. exact same quality and just go do that and uh, you know mm-hmm. like Everybody who I know who has a qualified trade does after hours work. Oh, huh. good. Yeah, when yeah. I was starting out, it did definitely didn't seem that way. It was kind of like, it's like, you're a mechanic. Maybe you want to work on this app. And it's like, no, like I'm done work for the day. And like a lot of the mechanic guys that I knew were like, I work on like shitty cars all day. I don't want to go home and work on more like shit. But what about right. you? What do you do every day? And what do you do for Serial Line? Well, I do videos, but I don't, yeah, that's a different. Is it different? A little, because my work isn't necessarily as hyper-focused on what I want to do. But I mean, it's still the same type of work, is it not? So if you're a mechanic and you do oil changes and brake pads every day, and then you get to go home and work and on your motors. friend's Fair car motors. and put coilovers and like set the alignment on your friend's car for the same money or more than you were making yeah, yeah, at work than like, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. No, like right. my buddy was a Toyota tech and then, you know, after hours he had a garage that only worked on eight six Corollas. And it was like, well, obviously you trust this guy because he's a Toyota tech. Yeah. And obviously it's way more fun for him to work on these cars that he really cares about than whatever yeah. random ass yeah, Camry it is at his work. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Although again, let's keep camry bashed into a minimum <laughs> hey man camry's are sick i was literally just talking yesterday about building the ultimate sort of camry i do think though one of the key takeaways and we're gonna we're gonna disagree with this and i get it we're gonna say no that's not true i disagree then, yeah but it kind of sounds like there is a dollar amount to some level or degree that equates to a cool build. I'm not saying it's impossible to build a super, super cool car on super, super, super cheap everything. <laughs> yeah. But it kind of sounds like when we, <laughs> if we were to listen back to this, you'd be like, hey man, like if you have a UCF 10, you can't just, you, you got to do a certain level. But if you have, it's like all those things. That, no, but that, that's the dollar thing though. It's like, okay, yeah. say, say the UCF 10 costs five thousand dollars and your budget is 50 now you have forty five thousand dollars to spend on the ucf 10 yeah but if your budget is fifty thousand dollars well now you spent 30 of it on a ucf 30 now you only have twenty thousand dollars right yeah and it's like the monetary value is still the same yes but But the person has to put it into it what is what we're saying it's what i'm saying is that the measure at the end of the day is actually still kind of like how much money you put into it a little bit. I mean, yes and no. Cause I mean, it could be like, it's all relative, right? Like, yeah, let's say you have a UCF 10 and it's like, you got the car for free because UCF 10s can be had for free now. And you're like resourceful and you happen to get an ISF drivetrain because you know, you wreck cars and you bought the ISF drivetrain for $5,000 and you put that together because you're somehow amazing. And so now you have like a, an ISF powered UCF 10. That's like, that's really sick. That's probably not a $20,000 car. Yeah. Did that exist? Did, did you? No, but I'm just saying, I just oh, built okay. that in my head. And I, if I would Good. show up to meet with that and like actually did some cool fender work and chose a cool set of wheels that weren't Blitz 03s, then that'd be cool. Now the you have an you build in your head are always amazing. Remember when you named that movie that didn't exist? Uh, um... Toto's Last Drive? 
<laughs> Toto's mile. <laughs> Toto's mile. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I get what you're saying. Like, look, there's the exception to the rule, but I, and it actually goes back to what Kevin said in the beginning, where it was like you were arguing that if someone bought an M3, that, you know, oh, I could buy this car for cheaper and put all this money into it and make it perform just as well. But it, we're still, I, I, in my head, I'm saying it's like, we're arguing that it's money spent to some degree equates to like, yeah, yeah. You know, like you, cool there has build. to be some level of money spent because there has to be some level of car built. Right. <laughs> like, so it's like, yeah. So, but what we're saying is like, if you say your budget's $20,000 yes. and if you buy a car for $5,000, yes, probably you're going to have to put $15,000 into that car for it to be like cool. Yeah, I mean, you unless you're the exception to the rule and can build something cool yeah, for yeah. Not a lot of money. And then if you have a $15,000 car, you might only have to put $5,000 into that car to have it be the same level of cool. Exactly. I mean, that perfect example would be a JZX100 versus an IS300, right? So like yeah. you buy an IS300 for five grand, it's going to take a bit of work to make that IS300 cool. If you buy a $15,000 JZX100, you might only have to do it, you know, coilovers and wheels or something. I mean, it maybe it's still auto, but I mean, you could have a pretty fucking cool JSX 100. So. Well, but I mean, honestly, situation. the IS is going to be auto anyway because there's like so that's many true. Manuals. There, there you go. And like that's the thing. It's just like yeah. So now you're going to turbo it. You're now you're going to turbo the two JZ and A, or you you know you just spend yeah. extra money. It's a lot of work on the for... one JZ turbo, and it, it it literally is like a continuous balancing act of like do you do you spend the money on the car and then the upgrades or do you just spend the money on the car and the upgrades but not that and you just spend the, all of that money on the on the higher level car and i mean honestly but then you're gonna buy that higher level car and you're gonna modify it anyway because you're a giant idiot and you're listening to this <laughs> podcast right but but maybe we just hit the nail on the head why people are paying 15 20 thousand dollars for jzx 100s because maybe they had an IS and they fucking spent twenty thousand dollars on an IS, and at the end of the day, it's still a fucking IS and it has all these problems because it's Dude, swapped. It's probably, and... it, totally, it's probably cheaper to buy a hundred than to get yeah. a uh, get an IS to a hundred state. Exactly, and it's a cooler car in the end. It's like you buy a fucking JZX yeah, for hundred. It's already cool, and yeah. then you just put five Instacrow. grand or ten grand into that, and it's infinitely cooler. Like at the end of the day, is an is a fully modded IS three hundred as cool as a fully modded JZX one hundred? No, that's not even a fair comparison. And the fair comparison is like, is a fully modified IS 300 as cool as like a 75% modified JZX 100? And the answer is still no. <laughs> there you go. I mean, maybe, maybe we, we just solved the fucking issue of like, why are people paying so much for these cars? Yeah. They're paying more than 15 for them. I guess if it's an auto, but. But I mean, uh, $15,000 more than the equally equivalent yeah, modified yeah, yeah. IS. Although and that's, this does stand in contradiction to, it probably won't, I don't know if you said it while in the episode, but it was like the car is just the canvas, but I guess. Right, but, but a JZX100 uh, is, a, is a fucking really nice canvas compared right. to, you know. Yeah, it's like you're, you're, you're starting with a fucking framed canvas versus like 8 by 11 fucking yeah, sheet of paper. Post, yeah, exactly. Uh, or Or you're starting with a brand new fresh train car that's never been fucking graffitied as opposed to like some fucking brown piece of shit that's been out in the out in the the wild for fucking 10 years right or just a fucking dumpster yeah exactly a bfi dumpster <laughs> exactly it's like sick at the end of the day it's a bfi dumpster but i mean that's the thing though like at the end of the day you could paint a bfi dumpster to be way more beautiful oh than yeah someone's name painted on the side of a brand new train yeah, that's there you go. Now I'm lost. So <laughs> what? So what are I, we saying? Like, are man, we, we could not have wrapped this up any better, and this is gonna be the perfect end. Yeah. Yeah, but now so it's I'm like lost. a BFI dumpster. What the fuck's a BFI dumpster? It's just like a fucking regular. It's a comparison to a dumpster. train car. Okay, in the graffiti world, a train car that's fresh and brand new is is basically the ultimate canvas. It's cool, right? Or like a brand new. I mean, in Europe, it would be a brand new fucking uh, like sky train or something, right? Or you could go paint the side of a bridge. So the train car is the best thing you can get. That's the JZX. No, no, like we're the train car is the G thirty seven. Where it's like, <laughs> where it's like. 
all right you have this and it's like you don't really got to do much to it i feel like it's gonna be sick whereas like all of a sudden like the s13 is the dumpster and it's like you could take this dumpster and you could fucking paint the mona lisa on it and this dumpster could be like the fucking thing for years and years and years yeah because the artwork on it is so amazing right but But you you gotta put put in whatever on the brand new bullet train and because it's on the brand new bullet train it's already so sick. Like, exactly. yo, you tagged the brand new bullet train? Exactly. Dude, you put your fucking name on the brand new bullet train? Exactly. But, like, you just tag a dumpster. Like, you got to be creating some fucking epic shit on right. a dumpster. Exactly. And, okay, and that's fair. Uh, we've said clout a few times in this episode, which is a fun fun thing to say now in the car world. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, there is definitely, you, you kind of see that come around, right? It's like what you just said is, and then if you painted the Mona Lisa on the side of the bullet train, there you go. Then you do your own fucking thing at that point, right? Like that's another yeah. level. That's, that's 40,000 hours of tagging dumpsters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you get that and then, yeah. and then you blow up and then you're like, yeah. you, that's yeah. your, you're not an overnight success, but you're yeah. an overnight success because yeah. you're then no one for And I mean, yeah, that seems to be an underlying thing is you got to put in work, man. Like to be good at anything or to build, even to just to build a fucking cool car, it doesn't happen overnight. Like you could be amazing. You could think you're the best at this and that, but like you're not, your first car or maybe even your second car is not going to be the sickest car. It's not, right? No. So. No, it can't be. You got to make mistakes, which we've covered. So and money can't buy that. You know what I mean? Experience has to buy that. That was our episode about money that didn't really talk about money. <laughs> but I think it kind of it how much money you should be spending or anticipating to spend. It related to money and how you can maybe not spend as much money as you could spend. I think we live in a society that just revolves on money, so every episode is kind of about money. You can nope. have yep. that mm-hmm. brand new ATS with like some crazy twin turbo LS. Like that is insane. You, you just, all right. Okay. Good. We're trying to do a wrap up here. Not just say random things we're looking at on the phone. I, feel. Ah. I already wrapped it up. You guys wrap up your end. All right. Well, thanks for listening. <laughs> to serial podcast. That's now. the wrap up. You just fucking take that out of any other episode. What's the fucking well, difference? Well, fucking, I don't know. Why then go to the website? Make something cool. Say something cool, Kevin. Some something, something funky. All right. Well, if you got cars, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. Probably less money than drugs would cost you. You might have more to show for it. Learn a skill. Learn a trade trade that trade for other people who you know who have similar trades it's a great way to save money Hmm. and uh yeah just have fun with it oh i think i got it you guys it's called a trade for a reason because you you trade it it. hey all right and on that note all right thanks for listening thanks for listening see you later thanks for listening for listening to Serial Podcast 9.